Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to the Beaver Creek Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are happy that you are here, and we are about to sing two hymns of praises to God. We're going to first sing about Jesus' love. Hymn number 183 in the brown hymnals. The words might also be on the screen. 183, I will sing of Jesus' love. arms. So that's what we're going to sing. We're going to sing hymn number 469, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, 469. Thank you. 
Majesty. seated. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. This is really a beautiful day, isn't it? Not only because it's the Sabbath, but uh, also because we have such uh, a beautiful program here today. And uh, this is a special time uh, that we're set aside to recognize those in our communities that provide services and also uh, to praise the Lord for all that he has done for us. And, you know, we cannot, any one of us, say that God has not been a blessing to us in our lives throughout the year and continues to be so. And uh, I, my name is Joel Halliday. Uh, for those of you who don't know me who are guests, and I am the head elder here at the Beaver Creek Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I am so happy to be the one to welcome you here this morning. And uh, so as we get into our program, uh, we're going to have an opportunity to uh, see those individuals uh, who are our special guests here today. Maybe learn a little something more about them. But uh, we're just thankful for you and uh, for the services you provide and uh, for carving out that time during the day today to come and be with us and be our guests. You know, uh, just as a quick reminder, I uh, just want to let those people who are not aware of our facility here, uh, that the, our restrooms are located off the main lobby, which if you go out the sanctuary to the do two doors to the left and the right, if you go out to the right, it'll be the men's restroom. If you go out to the left, it'll be the women's restroom, and there is an ADA uh, restroom right behind that around the corner. So, uh, uh, so if you need to use those facilities, that's where they're at. And uh, so if you need any assistance, we do have people out in the main uh, uh, lobby that can assist you uh, if you have any questions or need anything. Uh, so, but uh, uh, as we get into our program, we want to uh, let you know that um, uh, there are many things that are going to be going on today. And uh, first of which is our service today, which will uh, uh, give us an opportunity to recognize our, our special guests, as I mentioned. Also, uh, we have more about this here in just a couple minutes as the pastor comes up to uh, put more emphasis on these items. But uh, just so you know, we do have um, uh, Reggie and Lady Love uh, Smith here with us here uh, today, and uh, they're spending their worship service here with us, and uh, we're so happy to have you. And, you know, we are just so blessed uh, to have, have these two here um, uh, celebrating and praising the Lord here with us in music. And uh, also, just to remind you, and the pastor reminds you also, uh, we have a concert this afternoon at 5.30, right across the way over here in the park. And what a beautiful day the Lord has given to us, isn't it? 
My goodness, you know, we were thinking, you know, is it going to rain? Is it going to, what is it? Because you just never know about the weather around here sometimes. And, uh, but I can tell you, every event that we've had, and I think the pastor will agree with me on this, even though they predicted rain, the rain has held off until we were able to go get through each one of those events. So yeah. praise the Lord. But we have beautiful sunshine today, beautiful warm weather. And uh, so what a better way to spend the afternoon and celebrate God on his Sabbath day but listening to wonderful praise music in the park. And it's free. Bring your lawn chair, bring a blanket, whatever, to, so that you can enjoy it. But uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, also, uh, just kind of a quick history for those of you people who are visiting us today. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know the history of the Beaver Creek Church. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and I'm going to give you a whole didactic lecture on the history of our church. Uh, but I will tell you that uh, uh, the Beaver Creek Seventh-day Adventist Church has been in our community for almost 46 years. And uh, so even before it became a city, uh, it was in a, as we were a township, uh, just kind of a crossroads in the country, uh, uh, the Beaver Creek Church was here, uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. And, uh, you know, the Lord has blessed us in so many ways as he's led us uh, through the years. And, you know, we're just so grateful that uh, um, we have so many people here that, ha that are attending and that uh, we have a very, uh, just to let you know, we have a very significant outreach uh, uh, program here in our church and uh, uh, through the help of our pastor and uh, the, the leadership of the Holy Spirit uh, we're able to reach out into our community and to be able to touch the lives and the hearts of people that we may not even have known before but just by our presence and being able to make contact with them and uh, uh, some of you may have recognized us uh, at the popcorn festival uh, we were we're the ones wearing those blue shirts we're, do we have someone with a blue shirt on I saw one here I think Chris up there in our and uh, so uh, uh, the blue shirt there, which has HOPE on it, H-O-P-E. And uh, what that stands for is a very important acronym, uh, Helping Others Prepare for Eternity. And uh, so that's, a very, that's our mission. And uh, we just hope that uh, we can touch the lives of others and reflect the love of Jesus Christ uh, in, in uh, people's lives. You know, today, in these days, in these times, you know, there is uh, much hopelessness and uh, we're here to provide hope to those people who need it. And uh, we know that uh, our, our um, uh, leaders in our community are striving for that as well. And the work that they do is, has been very instrumental for, uh, in allowing us to be able to do that. You know, we enjoy those freedoms now. And, uh, we, and we respect those people who uphold the, uh, those rules, those laws that need to be in place. And we just thank you for, just for being here with us and enjoying this time together. And uh, so I would like to, uh, at this time, I would like to invite our pastor to come up. This is Pastor Delphine Gordon. He's our pastor here at the Beaver Creek Seventh-day Adventist Church. And he's been here for what now, four, four plus years? <laughs> yep, we started the fifth year uh, just a couple months ago. Time flies. Oh my, I tell time you. Time flies. And what a blessing it's been. It, thank pastor. you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Good morning, church. It is good to be here and it is good to have sunshiny weather. Let me tell you, I was checking the weather. I was checking the weather, and uh, I went, uh, whether it was Google weather, it was weather.com, or it was uh, AccuWeather, you know, a few days ago, they said 45%. I'm like, Lord, we, we talked, and uh, plenty of people are praying about this. We need some good weather. Then the next day we checked, what do we know? 15%. And then the next day we checked, at 5 p.m., it's 0%. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. And so we just wanted to thank God for his grace and his mercy. It is good to be here. And... Uh, you know, what we say here at Beaver Creek is that we are the church in the creek with the creek in its heart. All right. Uh, we we, we want to say go creek a lot, but, you know, we want to save that for the special occasions. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that uh, we enjoy doing is that God, recognizing that God made us all a family. And you don't have to wait for community guest day to come and share and be a part of the family. This is, it's open every day. But we're glad for those uh, times of special emphasis. And so uh, I just want to share a couple of announcements with you and then uh, introduce our friends that are here uh, with us today. Uh, board members, we've got some business to take care of. So remember tomorrow morning at 10, we have a uh, board meeting uh, as we continue to plan for the work of the church. And uh, and then don't forget that on Wednesdays, well, you see, the, the last Wednesday, something happened that prevented me from being here. I guess you might hear about that in a little bit, but uh, 
Uh, it will be for the next uh, uh, few Wednesdays, uh, but I know it was a blessed experience uh, with our, our elders and uh, our pastoral assistant, uh, Miguel, leading out. It was a beautiful experience. And by the way, you spoke about popcorn festival. I'll just insert this right here. We've got to learn to trust God's providence. Amen, somebody? We had the opportunity to pray, and I got permission to share this, to pray with one individual, just one, uno, solo, one person, this past weekend. Three days later, we got a phone call. We got a phone call here at the church. Miguel answered, and uh, it was the friend of the mother with whom we prayed. That morning, her son, standing on the sidewalk, 6.45 in the morning, waiting on the school bus, and was the victim of a hit and run. His back is broken in two places, and he has brain injury, internal bleeding, praise the Lord, that is under control. But she called back. She recently moved from out of state, have no local church family. What if you didn't reach out? When the Holy Spirit prompts you, wherever you are, just reach out. You never know what God might be using you to do to help somebody, to heal the hurt in our community. So uh, if you would, uh, you can join uh, in person or via Zoom. There's a link that goes out. And if you'd like to receive that, uh, friends at beavercreeksdachurch.org is the email address uh, that you can do that. Next week, next week is also going to be a, a beautiful uh, Sabbath. We have our thir uh, third quarter, 13th Sabbath school program. So uh, uh, the, 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 the classes from the Lord Division, the, uh, uh, the children, they'll be coming up to do uh, scripture recitations and, and music, and uh, we'll have a special presentation. And also there's going to be an interactive adult lesson discussion as we review the quarter. And then we will also have our communion service, uh, the Ordinance of Humility and the Lord's Supper. So please keep us in prayer as uh, we, we look forward to that. As a church, we celebrate all parts of the family. Amen? Amen. And uh, in about a week, uh, about eight days, we'll be having uh, the baby shower for Justin and Cherie Anders as they welcome little Aria, uh, as they prepare to welcome Aria. And so uh, you want to keep them in prayer. And uh, please give them your support. And uh, then uh, the following day, we have a church business meeting, which is for all members uh, as you get updated as to where we are uh, in our plans and uh, the, the, the church finan finances and direction. This is a part of, of what we do as a church family as we all plan together. Amen? Now, today, as a part of our community, we take special time to pray with and for our community leaders. And I'm sure it is good to know that uh, for our community leaders, you have church families, and this included, that are rooting for you. Not watching for you to trip. Not watching for you to make a mistake. See, there they go again. Not watching for some other challenge. But we have your best interests at heart. As I know you, you go day in, day out to make this community a beautiful place. I want to bring uh, greetings on behalf of uh, one of our county commissioners, Rick Perales. Uh, he indicated he wanted to be here, but uh, he is recovering from a very, very bad uh, accident. Uh, just uh, a few weeks ago, so please keep him in your prayers. We uh, we communicate, we talked last week, and uh, we texted a couple times this week, and he texted this morning, and he just asked that uh, we keep him uh, keep him in prayer as he recovers. Uh, he fell off a ladder, broke his ankle on the way down, hit his face on the back of the RV, and then fell on his back, and he had surgery. So continue to keep him. You know, it's hard to keep Rick down. <laughs> After I met him uh, uh, a couple years ago. Uh, but if he says that he can't, it's because he's really down. So please keep uh, Rick Perales in prayer and all of our county commissioners. Uh, commissioners. There are three county commissioners uh, that we do have. 
And uh, I also ask that uh, you'll keep uh, Charles Curran in prayer. Uh, he also wanted to be here, indicated he would have been here, but at the last minute he realized he could not make it. So keep him and his family in prayer and all of our council members. But today I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Glenn Dewar to come on up and uh, just to bring greetings on behalf of uh, the mayor and city council. And uh, with each of our guests, as you come on up, uh, you have, as we said, you know, about 90 seconds or so, but we also believe in grace. Amen, somebody? Amen. All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Pastor. Um, I am a, a politician, and in my other job, I'm a professor, so I've never met a microphone that I didn't like, so um, <laughs> we could be in trouble. Uh, but thank you so much for having me. Um, I often joke with Mayor Stone, it seems like oftentimes he'll be at a microphone speaking uh, and then the sun will, will open up, it will stop raining, so uh, maybe the two of you are working together well. uh, with the Lord uh, for the weather. But I uh, appreciate uh, the opportunity, uh, I'm a professor at Cedarville University as well as uh, on city council and just so much in scripture that guides us in terms of government. Uh, from Romans 13, verses 1 through 7, uh, 1 Peter 2, 13 and 14, uh, 1 Timothy 2, and my, really one of my favorite books of the Bible is 1 Kings. Uh, there's just so much that's rich there in terms of good and bad governance, in terms of instruction. So uh, one of the beautiful things of serving on city council, and I bring greetings from the entire city council, is uh, we're, we're your neighbors. And... Uh, we look to serve and to utilize a John 13 servant leadership uh, in terms of how we, we interact. And so if you ever have any comments, good or bad, uh, please email. I like to say my email inbox is always open. I love to chat. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, nuts and bolts types of things in the city from the streets, uh, for example. That's a very prominent uh, one and we're in the midst of uh, just fixing up Dayton Xenia and Kemp and some of the main throughways. So, uh, if you ever have any comments, if, if there's anything I can ever do, please do not hesitate to reach out. So, I think that's 90 seconds past. I'll try and stop there. So, <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you so much. Who, who was counting, right? <laughs> and uh, we, we thank you so much uh, for uh, the work that that you do. Okay. Oh, sure. No problem. Uh, now, I also uh, would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Bobby Fiore uh, up. I tell you, I've, uh, over the last couple years, uh, uh, liaising with the school district, I've had the opportunity to, uh, to meet uh, Dr. Fiore. She is uh, our assistant superintendent. And uh, Paul, we've got to pray for Paul. He's in DC right now. Uh, but come on up and uh, share with us uh, Dr. Fiore. Hi, thank you so much for inviting us. We really appreciate it. Delphine is a great support to our school district and we are so grateful for um, all the prayers and support that we get. This year has been a little challenging um, start because of all the obstacles presented by the pandemic. Um, all of the decisions that are made typically make some people happy and some people unhappy, um, which is never a goal of a school system to make half of your um, families unhappy. Um, however, I do want just to reiter reiterate that most of our decisions are made because we want to keep kids in school. We want to keep kids um, learning. We know it's what's right for their academic, their social emotional needs. So um, we've gotten off to a good start in school. There's been some challenges, but um, we appreciate any prayers. I'm going to swap mics with you. Okay. All right. This is a little bit better. Go ahead. Okay. Um, also, we have tried to put different supports in place for our students returning. Um, we had over a thousand kids on virtual last year, and we were starting an early um, English language arts K3, well really one three um, after school program for students to help with um, learning to read. We're setting up some tutoring opportunities for our kids after school um, in the secondary grades, and we have social workers to support our kids. Last year was 
really hard on a lot of our kids and a lot of our staff and a lot of our community. So we're doing everything we can. If there are things that you feel like we should be doing as a district that we're not, or you have any um, advice or suggestions, we're open to those. We welcome input from our community. We wanna do what's right for our kids and we wanna keep them in school. Um, there is a need right now for substitutes, so to put a shameless plug in there, if anyone's interested in substitute teaching um, or substitute bus driving or substitute really any position we have in the district, we need help because we're, we have a shortage of subs, so it makes it a little challenging in the day, but thank you for all the prayers, um, all the support, and we really appreciate you, Delphine. We appreciate all that you're willing to do to support our schools. We have great kids in a great community, and I'm very proud to work there. Thank you so much. And uh, with her today is her husband, Todd. Todd, we just just stand and, and, and give uh, give everyone a wave here. All right, Todd, it is good uh, to have you uh, with us today. You know, uh, the last few years we have, by the grace of God, built a good relationship. And I want to say thank you uh, to Carol, uh, Carol Halliday, our community services leader. And we're having all kinds of animations going on today, but that's all right. All right. All right let's go here. And. Uh, yeah, just, just take him as it comes. You gotta be ready in season and out of season. Amen, somebody? <laughs> uh, and, and Carol has uh, done a, a wonderful work uh, liaising uh, with uh, some of our nonprofits. And uh, I wanna uh, welcome Sharon, Sharon Fulcher, who is the executive director of Feed the Creek. Uh, it seems like two years has gone by so quickly because we didn't have this service last year uh, due to COVID, but uh, welcome, yes. Thank you, it is a, a pleasure to be here again. And we do, I do, Feed the Creek just wants to say thank you for your support to Feed the Creek. You collect food here, some of the people who attend here come and volunteer, and we just really appreciate that very, very much. Um, one of the questions that I get just about everywhere I go is, is why are there so many children who need food support on the weekends? And, we go back to the same answer every single year, and it really goes back to the, our drug epidemic, the problems that we have with, um, with drugs, which causes then many of our senior adults are now raising grandkids and great-grandkids. And if you're a grandparent and you own your home, you're not gonna get government assistance. So that's where a lot of it comes in. Yes, we have single parents that we serve as well, <clears throat> excuse me, but the majority of, of the kids that we serve are being raised by grandparents and great-grandparents. We have, um, just for, as an example, we have a 97-year-old grandmother, and when we first met her, she was 92, and she was raising 13 of her great and great-great-grandkids. And at the time, three of those were two years old. And if you've raised kids, two-year-olds are tough, let alone having three of them. Well, of course, over the years, um, some of those kids have grown up and are on their own again. But she lives in one of those 1950s homes that has one, it, hers actually has two bedrooms in it with that many kids. She's an amazing lady. Just an amazing lady. If you meet her, you will never ever realize that she's as old as she is. So just as an update, we are just you know a month into school, and right now we are serving th about 300 students on the weekends. And we don't have all of our numbers in yet from all of the schools, so we know those numbers are going up. Um, I talked to Josh Ashley, who is, um, our nutrition person for the school, and he told me that they are serving a thousand more students free lunches this year, that's every day, than they were last year even. So last, so they've served, the schools have served free lunch last year and then over the summer and then again um, this year, and the number of students is up by a thousand from last year. Because last year was new to us, and we weren't sure how long this COVID shutdown was gonna be and the financial impact that it was gonna have. So it just shows that it's having a huge impact on our schools, on our families, and our, and our kids. 
So one thing that we've been able to do to help um, families other than just the children with weekend food is we now have 19 little pantries here in Beaver Creek. Those little pantries are self-serve pantries. We have uh, little pantries at all of our fire stations. We have one that will be going in at the new fire station that just opened a few weeks ago. And so they're at the library, couple churches, those kinds of places. But anyway, there are 19 little pantries um, now in Beaver Creek. And they, so those little pantries are for the community to fill as well as the community to take from. But because the need is so big, we have volunteers at Feed the Creek who are in charge of each one of the little pantries that have to fill them at least twice a week to keep them filled in order to support the families that are here in Beaver Creek. Um, one thing that we're asking this year, because we have so many little pantries, usually at Christmas, or Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then spring break, we send family boxes home um, to the families that need them. Um, for those long breaks. And it also helps to help with their celebration of Thanksgiving and Christmas time. So we are asking churches to help us fill those boxes this year because the need at our little pantries is so big. The food that we would get in to normally put in these family food boxes are having to go out to our little pantries. So we're contacting churches that have been supporting us to help us fill family food boxes. We meet, need a minimum of 300 boxes. Um, we're not asking one church to do all of that. So if you are getting ready and thinking about how you can make an impact, um, family food boxes would be an amazing thing. And I'm sure I probably took more than my 90 seconds, but anyway, we couldn't do what we do without your support and people like you. So thank you very, very much. And you also have a special guest with you. I do, my husband Kelly's with me. He's been there, let's see, Feed the Creek started in 2010. And he's been there helping the whole time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Kelly, thank you so much also. And uh, as we continue, uh, yes, uh, we have uh, with us today, we have uh, Will Urschel, uh, pastor of uh, the Emmanuel Baptist Church over there in Xenia, uh, also the president of Bridges of Hope and councilman for uh, the city of Xenia. So we, you know, Xenia is not Beaver Creek, but we're all, we're, we're all a part we'll of that big family, right? Uh, Bridges of Hope uh, is one of those organizations that we also have the privilege of, of, of supporting and working with, and we're glad to do that. Thank you for your Great. ministry there, Bridges of Hope. Thanks, and Pastor. So much. Well, thank you so much, folks. Uh, just bring you a uh, uh, welcome from the body of Christ in Xenia, and what a joy it is to be here with you on a Saturday morning. I was out this morning, we have uh, work teams from Bridges that go out on Wednesday mornings and Saturday mornings and we pick up trash. Uh, somebody said, what's the, what's the product of Xenia? I said, it's trash. We've, we've picked up over a thousand bags of trash so far this summer and I'm glad we keep producing lots of work. We, we, do, uh, we were clearing brush this morning and uh, so I dropped my chainsaw off with one of the other guys and said, I'm sorry, I gotta go worship. Yeah, I got something more important to do here. Uh, Bridges is our uh, drop-in uh, adult shelter in the, for the whole, whole of Greene County. And we average normally about 60 homeless folks a month that are there, men and women. And they come from all different parts of the county. Uh, Xenia, Fairborn, Beaver Creek, Jamestown, Bowersville, and from the townships as well too. And uh, folks are there for a whole spectrum of different reasons. Some, some uh, have lost a job. Uh, some have had uh, just a hardship with some drug issues, uh, mental health issues, uh, various things. Uh, and so we work hard, uh, uh, it's a drop-in shelter, so folks come in the evening, uh, we feed them a, a dinner, give them a, a place to have a shower, store their goods, uh, they sleep in a common area on cots, and, uh, and then they get up in the morning and, and have breakfast again, and, and we send them out at 8 o'clock. Uh, but uh, our, our goal isn't just to find housing for people, because yeah, that's a desperate need for, for all the folks, but really, our, our, our real desperate need is our oppression from sin, right? And that's all of us, mm. right? Come We're all oppressed by sin. And we all have a desperate need to be reconciled with our creator. Amen. And so um, we don't take any state funds. We don't take any federal funds because we want to be able to have the opportunity every day to share Christ's love Amen. and his sacrifice with folks. Amen. And there's no, we have Bible studies in the evenings. 
Uh, we have something called a day hub on Tuesdays where we meet with folks and work on driver's licenses and IDs and applications for things, but also uh, just to share with folks about Christ. And I just, I, so I just want to say thank you so much for supporting us here from your church. And we, and we desperately need, you know, uh, in Xenia we have 82 churches just within the city limits. Uh, we got another 50 churches in the townships around us. And, and uh, if you think about the number of the bodies of Christ within the county, you know, we're, we're up around 150, 180 different churches. And I would just encourage you to think not only just about your financial support and, and, and volunteer support, but uh, one of the things we're we'll working on this next year is getting the shelter open 24-7 uh, so we don't not letting people out on the street every morning at 8 a.m. to wander around the city and come back at 6. Uh, uh, we're going to need some additional financial support for that, so think about that. But also, uh, we're going to start a program called Circles, and this is, this is a, a national program to help those of us that are white collar or blue collar learn how to cross over and work with folks who are no collar kind of folks. And wow. I'll tell you, as you work with folks in poverty, it's a whole different culture. It just is. And, and a lot of times it's scary to do that. And so we're going to start a program to, to train you how to do that and, and encourage you to, and so I'd encourage you to start thinking about praying uh, about what would it look like to, to get just one. <laughs> One person from the shelter to come be here with your fellowship, because this is a fellowship of wisdom. You know, we talk about um, food deserts in towns, and many of the folks at our shelter, they're living in a neighborhood where there's a wisdom desert. There's no one in their family that has wisdom ever that they have, and you folks have wisdom. I have wisdom. And we need to be sharing that with them. So pray, what would it look like? Wouldn't it be an amazing thing if on Saturday and Sunday mornings we were fighting over the opportunity to grab someone to come and bring them to our worship service, right? That should be our biggest problem at the shelter. We don't know how to, 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 to get people out to the churches. And that's what we need more than anything else is us and the body of Christ. And I just leave with you from uh, Matthew 25, you know, Jesus, at the end of times, he says, this is what he says. He says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. And you know what he's going to discuss? He's not going to discuss all our, of everything else God could discuss with us. This is what he's going to talk about. He's going to say, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance. We all want that, right? We're looking forward to that hope. But he says, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world, for I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. And I was a stranger, and you invited me in. And that's who these folks are at Bridges. They're hungry people, and they're clothes desperate. They need clothing, but they needed to be invited in, Right? And so I would just challenge you, start praying about what would that look like to invite some of these folks in to your home of wisdom here and to the freedom that Christ offers us. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you so much. Indeed, that's so touching. And by the grace of God, you can count our church in as we continue to support. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think that was a testimony. And... Uh, just want to uh, read here a letter from Chief David. Uh, he could not make it here today, but he sent a letter uh, not too long ago. And uh, you know, I was wondering, I was debating, uh, Carol, should I, should I read this or should I wait till you know, afterwards you know, when the PD is not here? Because they're gonna hear some stuff in this and say, hey, what, what, what happened? Say, on behalf of the Beaver Creek Township Fire Department, I want to thank you for delivering breakfast. <clears throat> Uh, to each of our uh, uh, four stations uh, a, uh, and for the A, B, and C shift crews. Uh, this is greatly appreciated by everyone. We are very proud of our fire and EMS personnel and the high standards of service they provide. The department is grateful for the continuous support and encouragement from the citizens in this fine community. And that's uh, from Chief Vandenboss. All right. So... Uh, all right, uh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, let's see uh, who we have next. Ah, what do you know? What do you know? I'm gonna invite uh, Officer Brownlee 
to come on up. He is the uh, CEO, which stands for Community Engagement Officer. I've had the privilege of, of meeting him uh, a few weeks ago, and I think we've started a good friendship. Yes, oh, sir, praise uh, the Lord. Yes, we're going to talk, though, after this whole breakfast thing there. <laughs> so. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Chris Brownlee. I am the Community Engagement Officer for Beaver Creek, like Pastor Gordon said. Uh, Chief has took away 60 seconds of my speech, so I'm going to make this short and sweet. He wants it for himself. Um, but seriously, guys, it, I'm here to be your liaison to try to answer any questions you guys may have, concerns, whatever it may be. Um, if you go to our website, my email's there. Feel free to email me things that may be going on in your community. Um, you can also pop in into the PD. I'm there Monday through Fridays. Uh, if I'm not out in the community engaging them, so engaging people. But uh, I'm just here to be a resource for you guys, so please use me, whatever you need. I'm happy to help. Uh, little known fact about Pastor Gordon, if you didn't know, he's in my uh, Citizens Police oh, Academy, and uh, I'm, I'm upset because you wanted to be a police officer, but you're feeding the firefighters. So <laughs> I, 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 I'm, it, we'll talk later, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead. I appreciate you being here, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, they, they probably didn't know that fact about, oh. about, about, about me wanting to be a police officer. Uh, this, is, this is actually, uh, let me see, uh, uh, 90, no, 90, college is 95, so this is, yeah, this is, this is a good 20-something years ago. I remember going into the police department uh, and getting uh, paperwork to fill out, and, uh, well, we see how the Lord led, but, you know, we continue to back the blue, amen? And we thank you so much for your service. Come on up, uh, uh, Chief Fiorita. Uh, I met uh, Chief Fiorita when he was uh, a captain, and I'm so thankful for the camaraderie and the, the, uh, the, the friendship of our acquaintance. And uh, when he became, uh, when, 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 I, when we heard that uh, Bob Evers was retiring, my mind went one place. And not only that, and I'm not saying this because he's here, I've said it to other officers, but I spoke to uh, one of the other captains. And I said, so who, who do you think, uh, you know? And he said, oh, there's no question. It has to be Jeff. It has to be Jeff. Welcome. Welcome. And breakfast for, uh, for well. three, <laughs> three crews. Well, as uh, Pastor Gordon has mentioned, it is a, it's a pleasure to be here and to serve as your chief of police. In my 30 years serving this department, I have probably spent more time in the city of Beaver Creek than I have at home, and my wife probably can attest to that. And probably over the last 20 years, I've probably spent, it's the balance between work, church, and home. The last 20 plus years, we've been serving our youth at church, and for the past few years, I've been serving as a youth pastor. So balance is so important, and don't forget that, young folks and older folks, keeping that balance in your life. You've got to put Christ first, you've got to put God first, and everything else falls into place. Community. I see up here it says community. Without you folks, we're not needed, and we need you to do our job. That is so true. As Pastor Gordon's going to see you over the next seven weeks uh, in our community, uh, in our uh, Citizens Police Academy, He's going to see how much, I mentioned this the other night at their opening, how much passion these folks have that work for you at your police department have in doing what they do. You may never see them. You may only sit in the back of a cruiser from being at a crash scene. Uh, you may never even have an encounter with them ever. But you, you're going to find out that they're just like each and every one of you sitting out there. And it's a great opportunity that Officer Brownlee has to share in this Citizens Police Academy with our folks. And you know, as I said, without you folks, we're not needed, but we really need you to do our job. I have 50 officers. Right now, we're three short because of retirements. On any given time, like right now, there's probably four out there and one supervisor covering almost 28 square miles. We're busy and, and we're here to serve. Servant leadership. You were going into thinking about law enforcement. That's what you're doing now. You're a servant leader. Amen. We are servant leaders, and you have to maintain that balance. You know, as the Great Commission says, we're here to make Christ-like disciples and start right here. And you probably start right here, and you can go out. There are 27, 28 churches in this city when I started here. I have no idea how many there are right now. However, they, they are. It's, it's, it's amazing. This is a great community, and I'm glad to be your chief, and my door is always open. I'll leave you with this. You can walk through our police department and those officers or sergeants 
other employees that have desks, you're going to find Bibles laying around on some of those desks. Yep, awesome. I saw one the other night. So, <laughs> I saw so, one the other night. Thank you very much, and uh, we thank you for your support, and please let us know if we can ever help. We'll do what we can. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So before you go, Chief, uh, I'll just invite uh, Bobby and uh, Chris, Glenn, Will, and Sharon, uh, just come on up. Uh, we'll, 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 do, we'll meet you down there. Uh, we also have a few tokens uh, for you. Uh, but we, as it says in Romans 13, we want to, uh, we want to pray for our leaders. And uh, you are sampling of our leaders that have come to worship with us today. And, uh, you know, when, when Peter, uh, Peter spoke to the man uh, on the way to the temple, he said, you know, silver and gold have I none. Uh, you know, we offer what we can. Uh, and they're just going to put a little token in your hand, but we want to also pray with you and for you. So uh, they, they'll do this here just now. And uh, then uh, I'm going to ask, uh, even if you're not serving currently uh, as an elder, uh, but uh, you have been uh, uh, serving here as an elder before here at Beaver Creek, if, if you would uh, just like to just come on up and uh, we lay hands on their shoulders and we'll offer a word of prayer uh, for our community leaders. This is the greatest gift that we could give, and it is the gift of prayer for their service. So if, if you would, if you're able, uh, just come on up, and uh, we could stand, just, just go forward a little, step forward a little bit. Yeah, step forward a little bit. Just come in the back here and uh, just put a hand. All right, got, uh, all right, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you for the great privilege of calling upon your name one more time. Lord, we know that as a father, you look down on your creation. From your throne on high and you send and you dispatch angels to watch over your people. In a very special way today, we ask, Lord, that you'd send one more angel to be with our city leaders, our county leaders. If there's ever a time that they need wisdom, Lord, it is now. So, Father, as a part of this community, as part of this community family, Lord, we present them before you. We ask that you bless them, that you protect them, that you provide for them. Be with their families, Lord. Be with the people that they serve. Be with the school district. Be with those students as they learn. And Father, may we always remember that wisdom comes from you. May we never turn away from listening to your word and for your instructions. And so, Father, we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. May you bless, we pray. Let everybody say, Amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. So it also gives me a great pleasure this morning to uh, welcome uh, some new friends, some more new friends. Uh, I, I, you know, I tell you, it feels like we've been connected for much longer than we have. Uh, of course, through other friends uh, there uh, at the Ministry of 3ABN. Uh, but I have had the privilege of, of meeting and talking with, uh, with uh, Reggie for the last uh, a couple weeks. And uh, I tell you, I'm just thankful for their Christian spirit and for the ministry of music that both you and Lady Love present. Every time you sing, our hearts are drawn closer to the Lord. And uh, they, have, they have sung in at least 12, maybe 13 countries around the world. They've, they have, the Lord has privileged them to be in many, many locations, but they are willing to be a part of the humble community here at Beaver Creek Seventh Avenue Church, and to to sing with us, and to to praise the Lord here at this location. So, we want to welcome you all the way from Nashville, and I just pray that the Holy Spirit will fill their fuel tanks, <laughs> literally <laughs> out there, and literally here, because. I know that they're a little tired, but by, may the grace of God be with them. Please, come on up. I think uh, 
Sorry, turn it on. Uh, I think uh, the, the word I've gotten so far today is service, serve. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, that seems to be. And so. Um, and, and, I, and I'd like to add that yes. Reggie has driven a bus before, so we might come on down and <laughs> <laughs> school <I> bus. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's another story. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So, but uh, we're so grateful to be with you, Pastor. Thank you. And uh, we've been talking really about a couple of weeks now. And, uh, you know, sometimes the Lord just tells you. Uh, to do something and I don't always do that you, you feel the prompting of your spirit you know just move forward my good buddy Danny Shelton talks about the blessings on the go yes that's right just move forward and sometimes I did but we got to talk and this guy right here his spirit it penetrated me and I'm like my goodness it's like we've known each other for 20 years who is this guy so I get on the internet and check him out uh, he's checking me out I'm checking him out you know <laughs> And here we are in a wonderful, wonderful community. This sounds like the community I grew up in and the one I live in there near Nashville. And we're so honored and grateful to be here. I will serve thee. I will serve thee. Because I love thee, you have given life to me. I was nothing before you. You have given life to me. Heartaches, broken pieces, ruined lives are why you die.
amen. And so by the grace of God, this evening we'll have indeed a worshipful experience. It's not a concert, a time of ministry and worship and music. And so we'll be praying for you. And at this time, we'll have our call to worship as the service continues. Hello, church. Our scriptural call to worship uh, can be found in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. And it reads, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper service. And as our musician pre plays our prelude, I, I urge each and every one of you to to just look and, and uh, take notice of God's goodness, the fact that you're here today. Not everybody's here. Not everybody woke up this morning, but just, just focus on God's goodness and how good God is to you.
Let us all stand as we sing our opening hymn. Our opening hymn is 511, 511. I know whom I have believed. <laughs> chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. So this verse was chosen today because it speaks of the building of God's house after the time of the Jewish exile. So that improvised nation pulled together until that building was a reality. So please turn your Bible to Haggai chapter 1, verse five through eight. And I'm, I'll be reading from New International Version. So now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thoughts to your ways. Go up into the mountains 
and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. So I just want to say thank you for being a faithful giver, our members. For this, uh, we usually, we, even as we continue to support the humanitarian needs and the organization in our community. As our church members know, uh, we have made goals this year to raise funds to expand our facilities for our classrooms, our youth needs classrooms, our deacon and deaconess needs a room for their whatever it is that they need. <laughs> and I know probably down the road we need a bigger fellowship hall too. So anyway, so this is the reason we have a lot of things that we needed done, like improving our facility area and all. So, and you know this, uh, in the image it says we need to press together as a community, as a church members, and we need to help one another as neighbors. And God promises us to trust him. And he even, how many times in the Bible that says, do not fear? Come on now, you're preaching. Because he's gonna take care of us. Amen. So, and I think about another verse from Luke, I think, chapter six. It says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure. And press we need down. to press down, yes. shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Amen. So your offering today helps the expense of keeping this light on, pay our electricity. I'm the treasurer, because I know. <laughs> and Amazingly, we are also able to help our community also, and you heard that today. And also just to let you know, our pastors, uh, anything that you give today, we don't pay our pastor from here, from the offering that's that right. you give. Make it plain. Yeah. <laughs> get paid elsewhere, that's right. Yeah, he gets paid from the conference headquarters, so. So your offering for the church budget stays here. And if you like, you may also give directly to the church building project. And all you have to do is write down, here's uh, in front of your pew we have this, and all you have to do is, oh, there's one. It says building fund. I'm sorry. Um, so, if you are watching online, you may also go online to Beaver Creek SDA Church. Oh, I didn't know I have TV here. And you just click online and go from there. And there should be a building fund there if you like to. But the local church budget usually goes to different uh, entity of our church project that we have. And of course, after we pay all our bills. So. May God bless you all as you give. And will the deacons please stand. And let's bow our head and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for a beautiful Sabbath morning. Thank you, Lord, that you are the giver of all good things. You taught us to give a tenth back to you, to show our obedience, and to be a cheerful giver. So please accept this offering and bless them so it can be used to spread your holy name and bring blessings to our community. I pray that the plans of our church are your plan also. Lord, I pray for the pouring of the Holy Spirit to point us each day to you. We praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
We have a high priest up in heaven. In a temple made by God, not man, behind the veil, in a place most holy, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, investigate.
Now that's going to be really tough to follow that. <clears throat> I'd like to do my own rendition of that song. Amen, somebody. Now, as, this, as this church knows, my singing ability is very poor. <clears throat> there would be a mass exodus, Pastor. As you all know, uh, now is the time for our prayer portion of our worship service. And uh, I have just a couple of prayer requests I'd like to read out loud. And maybe I'll take one, maybe two, Max, from the audience. But a couple of prayer requests this morning are the Gallagher family. Pray for that family. Their children are all kind of sick right now, not with COVID, but with other ailments that are passing. Pray for our brother Sterling. I guess Sterling lost his brother recently. Pray for his family. Continue to pray for Jean and Edie McKenzie as they're continuing to heal in the hospital, Lord. And we know there's many other prayer requests. Is there one other two special prayer requests this morning as we move along in the church service? Seeing none, does anyone have any unspoken requests? If so, we'd like to raise your hand, and we will pray together here today. Um, let's let's go ahead. We'll just go ahead and kneel, and we will pray. Perhaps we'll sing our prayer song first again with not me singing, and our substitute, Joe, will come up and help us with that. Thank you, Joe. We will sing and then we will kneel together. I will cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this beautiful service. Thank you for the wonderful ministry of music that you've brought with us today, Lord. So encouraging. Lord, and also thank you for our community members, Lord, and our leaders who are here, Lord. Please bless over them, bless over their families, bless over their labors, Lord, as they continue to serve and uplift this community. Lord, this is not the first time that we've prayed for them. Lord, we've been praying for them throughout the year, Lord, and we as our church here, we will continue to pray and uplift them. Lord, you've heard the prayers this morning for the Gallagher family. You've heard as we lift up their children, Lord, and all the children in this church. Lord, we also pray for our brother Sterling and, and his brother uh, who is who in their family, Lord, who is in a time of mourning right now. Lord, also lift up the Jean and Edie McKenzie, their families, Lord, and their health. Lord, you have heard the spoken, unspoken requests. Lord, you saw the hands that were raised. Lord, you in deeply know what is happening in the lives of the individuals here at this church. Lord, we pray that you will be with them and that we will feel you in a special way this Sabbath, Lord, and we continue to tune our hearts and refocus on you. It is in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And now it's time for our children's story. Filling in will be our Abel family. Thank you. I shouldn't say anything, but we look a little bit different right now. I, You're spoiling the story. <laughs> Boys and girls, will you come forward? and girls, how are you this morning? Louder. Is there something on my face? Should I believe them? <laughs> oh my! What happened? Let's see. 
Oh no, I'm making it worse. I need help. I can't take this off by myself. Is it getting better? Oh, good. Should I have been mad at the mirror? No, the mirror just showed me that my face was dirty. Should I be mad at Willie for holding the mirror and showing me my face? No, I need a clean face. Why did Jay clean my face? The dirt on my face represents sin. Can we clean ourselves from sin? No, we can't remove our sins. We need someone to help us. That's right, Jeffrey, we need Jesus. Did Jay hurt my face when he scrubbed it clean? No, and Jesus doesn't hurt us either. He comes to us in a still, small voice, and he shows us where we need him. He's gentle and loving. Will I like what I see in the mirror now? I will, won't I? I have a nice, clean face. This mirror is like God's law. It shows me where I need cleaning from sin. I can choose not to believe God's law and keep walking around with a dirty face. Or I can ask Jesus to clean my sin. When I ask Jesus to clean my sins, he does. I also want him to live in my heart. And when I ask him to live in my heart, I can look at God's law and I see a path to life. Life with Jesus. In his word, he tells us in Psalms 19, verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. He also tells us, This is love, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. And then, he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, then you will have good success. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in all he does. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I have one last one. It 
if you love me, keep my commandments. So I hope you remember when you look in the mirror, Jesus wants to forgive us and cleanse us and make us clean. Thank you for listening so quietly. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you that you love us, and it doesn't matter how dirty we are, that you will clean us and that you love us, and that if we follow your laws, you shine through and we can be lights for you and in our community. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go back to your seats now. Thank you. from Revelation 14, 6 through 7. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of the heavens, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who hath made heaven and Earth, the sea, the sea, and springing of and the springing of waters. May the Lord add a blessing to His word. By the way, we brought the band all the way from Nashville. We call it the Apple Dumpling Gang. You ready, Chris? I have fixed my mind on another time. On another time And here I mean To stand until God gives me more light And that is today Today, today until he comes, I have fixed my mind on another time, on another time. I have set my course on the narrow For I know the time is close at hand on which I watch and that is today and today, today until he another time on another time even so
Reggie for that ministering song and Lady Love for setting the pace today. Music is as much a part of worship as is a spoken word. Thank you, Abel family, for stepping in at short notice. And we continue to pray for the Gallagher family. Thank you, Kaylee, for the scripture reading. And I covet your prayers as we get into a message today. We are continuing our series, Why I Believe. Searching the scriptures beginning with Paul, finding Jesus as the foundation of all we believe. Now for you Bible students out there, you say, well, that was a reading from John, not from Paul. Well, we're coming to that. But as we usually do, you're getting your handouts. Those of you are watching online, you'd have seen a link on Facebook, uh, the one on YouTube, or you'd have gotten an email if you are on our mailing list that you could follow along. Uh, there may be a pen in front of you, or maybe you take a picture and convert it to your device. But I pray that you could follow. But before we get into that, what we like to do, we like to connect the dots. And last week, in part 11, the subject was hope amidst the rubble. And we've been looking at the blessing of talking about the second coming of Christ. And as the Lord had it, it tied right in with the memory our country is going through. I shared with you the story of Will Jimeno a member of the Port Authority Police Department, you know, that joint police department between New York and New Jersey. How he and some of his colleagues went in as first responders to rescue people from the calamity that was just about to take place. As he was going in, he called his wife. And after a couple pleasantries and sharing the urgency of the situation, the call hung up. And she said later on that I knew something was wrong because he did not say his usual, I love you. For the next several hours, she wondered what happened. The 
towers came crashing down on him. And he was there with a friend, and for the next 13 hours, all they could do was hold on to hope. He hardly knew his co-worker, didn't even know his first name, and for the entire time that they were there, they would talk to each other about family and friendship and the things that really matter in life. When one started to fall asleep, the other would yell and say, wake up, my friend. And so they did to each other because they were holding on to hope. You see, hope keeps a man alive. But for the Christian, even if we should die in this life. When you die in hope, the faith of the coming of the Lord, you know that he who shall come will come and he will not tarry. And when he calls, he will resurrect those who have fallen asleep in him. And there was Will as he was pulled from the rubble. And he went on to tell his story. It became a, a television a movie, and later on a book. And these were the five questions that we looked at holding on to hope. Number one was, what does Paul express as his highest hope for the brethren? It indeed was the second coming. He said, the things that are going on around you will happen, but my hope is the presence of the Lord at his coming. You see, we shouldn't sorrow as others who have no hope. And as you heard earlier, one of the things that we try to do is to help others prepare for eternity, H-O-P-E. In so doing, we want to help others pursue excellence, excellence in living, excellence in education, excellence in all, in all areas of life. But the highest hope is the hope in the coming of the Lord. You see, if you watch the news lately, and if you've, you know, taken a glimpse every now and then uh, for the uh, past couple of decades, they're planning to help themselves out by moving to another planet. Anybody heard about that? Have mercy after what we've done to this one. Well, I digress. Question two that we looked at last week was, can having hope improve our health? You better believe it. The Bible speaks of it. And you know, the Bible is such a, uh, it's such a scientific book. It's a medical book. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. All the things about good hygiene, that was all in the, in the Old Testament. They knew that. But can having hope improve our health? The Bible says, I will hold on to the Lord, for he is my hope, and he is the health of my countenance. You ever take, took a time to think of that uh, proverb that says, a happy heart is good like medicine, but a broken spirit gives you osteoporosis? It didn't say it back then, but that's exactly what they were talking about. When you laugh and you're happy and your, your body uh, releases endorphins into your system, it keeps you healthy. And that's the work of hope. Though some find it confusing, who is the source of our hope, of our help? You know that psalm says, I will look to the what? Hills. But he asked the question, from where does my help come? It doesn't come from the hills. It comes from the one who owns the hills. Hello, somebody. My help cometh from the Lord. The Lord who did what? Who made heaven and earth. Oh, we're going to come back to that in just a moment, so let me mush on. What's Peter's counsel about those who scoff at his coming? He says the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. I, 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 I. <laughs> I've got to be mindful how I speak, and I measure my words every time. But you know, there are times when we hear promises and promises and promises. Oh, have mercy, somebody. If you can't say amen today, say ouch. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? The arm of flesh will fail. And it's good to make promises. But if and when people fail, it doesn't mean that we cast them aside, no. Because... That's just the way it is in this life. But there is one who has never failed. And he says, I'm coming again. As you look throughout history and you see all of the things that have been fulfilled, just as his word has said, you know that when he says it, you can take it to the bank. 
The Bible says his word shall not return to him empty, but it will accomplish that for which he sends it. And then the last question we looked at last week was, can we have true assurance in the hope of a hereafter? Oh, yes, we can. God told us in his word, in John 14, I'm going to prepare a place for you. You know, I'm going to have a home in the city, and I'm going to be able to build one out in the country. Yeah. This one that's in the city, it's already there for you and for me. It's prepared. We do not have a better architect than God himself. Amen. And he has prepared a place for you. So let us hold on to hope. We do not go on through this life with a blind eye as if, you know, everything is all right. Like the proverbial ostrich putting your head in the sand. No. But we are to be ministers and messengers of hope. People are looking for hope. They turn to so many different things. But God has given us hope in his word. And hope keeps a man alive. And so today for part 12, the title of our message is From Fear to Faith. From Fear to Faith. Now, to my new friends who are with us for the first time, there's a little uh, thing that we do. Uh, it's, it's, it's happened here at this church, and we, we, we've decided to uh, continue with it. You've got to listen very closely so that you can find out where I'm going. If you follow my words... Don't think about the food that's back there. There's plenty. We won't be fasting, but we'll be feasting on the word from the Father. Did you figure that? So let us go. From fear to faith, from fear to faith. When Jesus taught his disciples about earth's, did you get it? When Jesus taught his disciples about earth's final days, one thing he said would happen when people began to see the what is that word? Fulfillment of the events he foretold. There we go. And the calamities coming on the world is that men's hearts would fail, fail them from fear. fear. You know, somebody says that fear is false evidence appearing real. I heard that some years ago and I wrote it down. There are so many things that cause us to fear. Well, we're going to take a closer look at that word here in just a moment. Well, let's continue. Often, uncertainty about the... Uh, which side was that? Uncertainty about the future tends to... There you go. Fill the mind with anxious thoughts, and if left to wander aimlessly, many go as far as to, what's that word? Fret themselves into a frenzy. Have mercy, somebody. Now, if this applies to you, Say, help me, Lord, but don't say it out loud. Say it inside, okay? But I'm sure we've all been there sometime in our life. It's easy to wonder what's coming next. Have ever been on a road trip with your kids? Yeah? Are we there yet? But God has given us good news. Amen, somebody? God has given us good news that will enable us to stand firm even when everything seems to be falling apart. 
he calls us back to himself as our father to, there we go, I heard it, find safety in his arms of love. Noah, though living in an age when men seemed to forget God, was moved with godly fear in response to God's warning of a coming flood. And in so doing, saved his family because of his faith. Somebody says that faith is false. Sorry, faith is forsaking all. I take him. Faith. Those are borrowed. I don't know. Uh, those, those are anonymous. I don't know where those came from. So I just want to give credit where credit is due. He forsook everything else. You can just imagine that uh, building uh, this, this, this boat, this huge boat, something that no one has ever seen before, took a lot of faith. Because he was giving up all of his resources, even had hired hands, as you can imagine. Is there a similar message for us today? I'm talking about good news. Is there good news we can, what is that next word? Is there good news we can follow? You ever heard the statement, you're going to follow the news? I know we've been turning off the TV a lot lately because the news is not very helpful. But there's some good news that we can follow, which will give us courage in these unprecedented times. Let us pray as we study. Father in heaven, in this moment I ask that you'll strengthen me. I planned and I prepared, Lord, but I pray that you'll present through me. And may we all be blessed alike, I pray. Thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you go with me to the book of Hebrews, which I believe to be authored by Paul, we'll make that connection. Hebrews chapter 11. Now, if you, whatever you have, whether you have a Bible or one, one that may be in front of you, or you're going to turn in your Bible or turn on your Bible, make sure you're following the Bible. Amen? You might have to flip or click, but, but follow. And I, I'll save my, uh, my amazing Android statements for another time. <laughs> Verse 7 says, by faith. By what, everyone? Faith. faith. This is called the faith chapter. Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with, what is that word? Godly fear. I like that. We're coming back to that in a moment. He prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Notice that Noah obeyed the directive of God. Because he was faithful to God, he had never seen a flood. He didn't know what to expect, but God said, do it, and Noah followed. It's the blessing of faith always to follow what God says. Because indeed, it is not about our doing, but about our faithful following. Faith will evoke action, and that's what happened here with Noah. God gave him some news. He said, you see the world that's going on around you? The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that the hearts of men were exceedingly wicked. You say, wait, is he talking about 2021? Well, Jesus did say, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. What are we talking about? Well, let's continue looking here. I believe that John also comes with some news. Maybe a little similar to what Noah had, he comes and he shares a warning that was given to him in vision. And for this we go to Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, beginning at verse 6, the Bible says, And I saw another angel doing what? Flying in the midst of heaven. Now what is interesting about the book of Revelation is that the book of Revelation is a symbolic book. What type of book? It's a symbolic book. About two-thirds of the references in the book of Revelation come from the Old Testament. 
And so because it is a symbolic book and a lot of the references come from the Old Testament, we need stuff in the Old Testament to unlock the keys of Revelation. You know, the book tells us that we are not to seal the words of the prophecies of this book. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. It's a beautiful message. And you know why? If you look at the very beginning of the, of the chapter, in chapter 1, you don't have to go there. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation of Jesus Christ. And so, because it's a revelation of who he is and what he is doing for his children, we want to hear about it. And it goes on to say that he sent and signified these messages to his servant John by an angel. And so John here in Revelation chapter 14 says, verse 6, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell in the earth. So here we have these five questions that we're going to answer as this message unfolds in the subheading, Embracing Godly Fear. Embracing Godly Fear. What is the core of the message from the first angel of Revelation 14? What is the core of that message? I'll repeat that verse. He says, that the angel has the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell in the earth. The everlasting gospel. What is that everlasting gospel? You know, one of the things that I, I, I enjoy reading and understanding about God is that nothing takes him by surprise. In Timothy and in Titus, it tells us that before the world began, God, who cannot lie, he had provided a way for his creation. In case sin should come into the world, there was a way to fix that problem. Before the world began, it didn't take God by surprise. So it says there in verse 6, that he has the what, everyone? The everlasting gospel. Now, the word gospel comes from the Greek word euangelion or euangelion. Now, the first part, EU, whenever you see that, when you see that in, in, you know, in science day, it usually means good. Okay? You, you've heard of distress? What's the opposite of distress? Eustress. Right? It's a good type of a stress that you need so that you can uh, continue moving. Are you with me? Stay with me here. It says the everlasting gospel. Where was the first place in scripture that we have any inkling about the gospel? It's right here in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. See, Adam and Eve had just sinned. And they tried to fix the situation by putting fig leaves on, have mercy. They realized their nakedness and, and they felt ashamed. They tried to run away from God when God came and he was calling, where are you? It's not that God didn't know where they were. But where are you in our relationship? Something has happened. But after first investigating what was going on, God allowed them to come forward and confess. There was something that he said. He says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Bible scholars call this the proto-evangelium, the first gospel, meaning uh, that this snake that came with a lying word uh, that was deceiving to Eve and Eve becoming an ambassador to her husband saying, eat this fruit, and Adam outright rejecting me as God and listening to his wife who listened to the serpent, I'm going to deal with the problem. Don't worry about it. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to put enmity. I'm going to put you at odds. You see, when Adam obeyed the serpent, he gave over dominion and control legally. You remember when Satan came to Jesus and said, all this has been given to me, and I give it to whomever I will? You notice Jesus didn't argue with him. But Jesus came not to wrestle with the devil, but to buy it back. He came to pay the price so that 
earth could be bought back and God could fix it full and final. And that is yet to come. But that's the good news. It's the everlasting gospel. It wasn't taking God, didn't take God by surprise. That plan was made. That one who himself is God, equal with God, as we find in Philippians chapter 2, 5 through 11, he would go down there on his own volition, become a man, and pay the price of their sin. Isn't that good news? This is amazing. Now, that was the first gospel. Let's keep on looking at this. What about this guy? You recognize him? I think the artist kind of drew that little kid a, a little bit too small there. Because I'm sure Isaac was a strapping young man. But notice what Jesus says in John 8 and verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. What is he talking about? When Jesus said this to, uh, to, to, to those there in his hearing, he said, listen, Abraham was happy because he saw my day. How could Abraham have seen your day and you're not even 50 years old? Well, you see, he got a lesson about the lamb who taketh away the sin of the world when he went in faith to offer his son as a sacrifice. Now, this, that, that passage really gives people a lot of challenge. You see, Abraham knew the voice of God. And I thank God that he's the only person, Abraham, who has ever had this test. If anybody else says that this test has come to you, they're lying. But Abraham, this was now his only begotten son. Not his only son, because he had Ishmael, and later on he would have more sons with Keturah. But this one was special because this was a child of faith. God said, listen, you're an old man, and your wife has thought, uh, has, she hasn't born any children to you. She's barren, but I'm going to give you a child. And so they named the child Laughter. That's what Isaac means. God, you're funny. We're going to have children? <laughs> And then he says, take this child and sacrifice him unto me. Well, how am I going to have, have nations after me if I sacrifice the very heir that you give? But as he lifted that knife and his brain told his muscles to bring down that knife and plunge, God says, wait. Now I know that you fear God. That you what? Fear God. We're coming to that. And behold... There was a ram caught in the thicket. This ram represents Jesus Christ, who is our substitute, who will pay that, who has paid that ultimate price for you and for me. That is good news. It's etern it's the eternal gospel. Adam and Eve knew it. Noah knew it. And here we find Abraham all the way down through the course of time, they all knew that gospel. It's the same gospel that is here for us today. Amen, somebody? It's not a new gospel. But let's look at this. Question two. Why is this message to be so far-reaching in its scope? You see, the gospel of God is not for a few people. It's for everybody. It says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell in the earth. To what? Every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. There is no one on the face of the earth that should not hear this gospel. Now, let me ask you this. Did Jesus say that this would actually happen? If you go with me to the book of Matthew, what book? Matthew chapter 24. I hear the pages turning. Matthew chapter 24. Look at this. Verse 14. The Bible says this. This is Jesus speaking. And this gospel, not another gospel, of the kingdom will be preached in most of the world. 99% of the world. All the world. For a what, everyone? A witness to how many nations? All nations, and then the end will come. Friends, a lot of times we, uh, we, we, we focus on the political scene and we say, now, now, now how is the gospel going to get in there? They've got all kinds of dictators, and they've got everybody under surveillance. How is the gospel going to get in there? <laughs> Do I need to remind you of some of the things that God has done in the past? You remember when that army came for Elisha? And Elisha's servant said, how are we going to get out? 
Elisha said, open your eyes. Pray, pray, and the Lord opened his eyes, and he looked, and he saw chariots of fire all around. Listen, God is an amazing God, and if God says that he will do it, he can accomplish it. Amen? Amen. And if he calls you to help him, and by the grace of God, you follow. This message is to be far-reaching. Everyone must have an opportunity because God is not going to bring about anything until everyone has had an opportunity to hear for him or herself. We serve a fear God. Now notice this. How should we interpret the fear factor of this message? How should we interpret the fear factor of this message? The message was, in verse 7, saying with a what type of voice? A loud voice. It's megalophone in the Greek. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give, give glory to him. Now, now, I thought the Bible says that God hath not given us a spirit of fear. How is it that the angel is saying that we are to fear God? Well, one of the things that's interesting about the, the, the word fear, anybody ever uh, looked at the phobia list? Now, I'm going to reveal something about myself about years ago, okay? Uh, when, I taught, oh, when I taught high school, <laughs> right, uh, I'm not looking, but, you know, uh, <laughs> one of the things I like doing with my kids, some of these, you know, these, these, we, we study the phobia list. And uh, I remember those students. I, I taught uh, for a couple years, actually, at uh, an all-girls school an Episcopalian school, and uh, uh, I was a choir, choir master there, and we, we just had fun doing little things. We studied the phobia list. Did you know that there is a fear called phobophobia? Phobophobia is the fear of being afraid. It's the fear of fear. Now, you're already afraid. You're afraid of fear. You're afraid, you're afraid, you're afraid of, uh, okay. And, and, but it's real. It's the fear of fear. Phobophobia. Anybody here arachnophobic? Huh? Fear of spiders. Yes? <laughs> I forgot what, what, what is the fear of your shadow, but that's, that's a real one too. But, but how should we interpret the fear factor? Uh, go with me to the book of Psalms. What book? And we're going to go to Psalm 111. Stay with me. We're right now at the climax of the message, and we're going to begin to come down. Psalm 111. Psalm 111, I'm going to read verse 10. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is what? Is the beginning of wisdom. Did someone talk about wisdom today? Talk about a wisdom desert? Have mercy. If we want to have good communities, if we want to have a good county, if we want to have a good country, then we need to point people back and say, let's fear God. Jesus says, don't fear the arm of flesh. Don't fear man who can do nothing to you, but fear God. There's a difference. Let, let, let's look at this. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures for how long? Forever. Forever. Now, how can we understand this? Well, let's, let's, let's look at this for a second. Fear. It comes from the Greek word phobeo, which means, now notice, frighten. Passively, it means to be alarmed, but by analogy, it means also to be in awe, that is, to revere. Okay? To be sore afraid. Fear exceedingly or even reverence. The same one word. Now, it's based on the context. You ever notice that when the angel came to a person with a message from God, the first thing they said was what? Fear, Fear not. See, they, they didn't want the, the individual to receive this message with fear. But when it comes to God, we are to fear God. How do we understand the difference? 
And so as I prayed a couple, of, a couple of weeks ago, I told my wife, I said, babes, there's a message on my mind, and I'm praying, I'm asking God for answers. And let me tell you, when God comes through, it's a sweet thing. You want to jump up and shout hallelujah. Mm-mm-mm. There are two types of fear. I remember I was laying on the bed. Lord, how, how, do, I, how, how do we do this? And it was like, you, you know when you, you download the information? Hello, somebody? And you don't have any Wi-Fi interference? Hello, somebody? That's exactly what happened that morning. We have two types of fear. We've got ungodly fear. And we've got godly fear. So we heard of the godly fear already from Noah. So it means if you've got godly fear, you also have ungodly fear. How do we understand this? This is, this is what was impressed on my mind. Ready? Ungodly fear, frightful emotions that affect reason. Frightful emotions that affect reason. Uh, when you are afraid of something, you don't know how to handle it. You can't think straight. Uh, these frightful emotions, they affect your response. These frightful emotions, they affect your reaction. Sometimes you freeze. A- anybody ever had real fear? I tell you one time, I was, this is when I was back in Oklahoma, I, 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 I was a chaplain at an academy there, and um, one, one evening, late one evening, one night, everybody else had already gone to sleep, I went to put my laptop away. So I got my laptop, and then I went to look, look for the power cord, and as I reached for the power cord, the power cord moved. Say, wait, my power cord, wait, my power cord is still moving. And it was about this long. I called a friend up. I said, hey, I think I got a black snake or some other snake in here, and I don't care what type of snake. The only type of snake I know that's a good snake is a... Please, don't send me any emails, Peter. Fear. Ungodly fear. Frightful emotions that affect reason. But notice this. Godly fear, my friends. Godly fear. Faithful expectancy in awe and respect. Faithful expectancy in awe and respect. There is something about God. Now, now, now notice the face. When there's ungodly fear, it's like a cringe. But when there's godly fear, there is this awe and amazement. Both, we're talking about the same word. With ungodly fear, You either want to fight or you want to take flight. But with godly fear, it will lead us to faith and to find favor in God. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall do what? Direct thy path. But do you realize what it says there just before that? It says, my son, do not forget my law, but let let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, and so shall you find favor and high esteem. You find favor with God when you fear God. There's a faithful expectancy in awe and respect. Now notice this. Ungodly fear, this fear produces reckless behavior. When there's ungodly fear in our city, when, there's, when we are afraid of one another, we don't know how to relate with one another, we behave recklessly. It makes the job of my, my dear friends in blue much harder. Have mercy. But when we've got godly fear... This fear produces reverence. You know where reverence is? Reverence is awe plus respect. That's reverence. When we have reverence for God, we are model citizens. When we hear the word of God, when we follow his word, we become model citizens. Let's go back there to Revelation. Chapter 14. Let's look at this next question. 
How is this connected to the, what do you think this next word is? Fourth precept, God's law. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7. The Bible says, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And then it says, and worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of waters. Revelation 14, 7 actually is one of the largest quotations that you find in the New Testament from the Old Testament. And so John, he immediately would understand that I've heard these words before. Where did I find them? Where did I find these words? When we fear God, it reminds us that the hour of his judgment has come. Now, now uh, let me pause and say this. For those who, by the grace of God, have sought to humble themselves before the Lord and faithfully follow his word, they have nothing to be afraid of. Amen? You see, the judgment of God is actually a good thing. Why? Because you know that God is a fear and what? Sorry, not fear. He's a fair. You got that? Yeah. We got to enunciate right, don't we? He's a fair and righteous judge. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Yeah. Yes, he will. And as a matter of fact, when you study the companion book of Revelation, that's in the Old Testament, it's a book called Daniel. It means God is my judge. That's what Daniel means. He tells us there in Daniel that judgment was made in favor of God's saints. So, so the judgment of God is nothing that we have to be afraid of because he himself is watching over his word to perform it in our lives. But well, where is John getting, where is the, the, this message from the angel that was given to John coming from? How can we understand worship? In Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. What do we find the scripture says? It's a beautiful passage. And it says this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Then it says, six days shalt thou labor, and what? Do all your work, but the what? Seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor what? Thy stranger that is within thy gate. And then it says the reason. For in how many days? Six days the Lord what? May the heavens and the, the earth, what else? The seas and all that. John is like, he's excited. There it is. This message that the angel comes to give to me, reminding me that we should have reverence for God, is a call to worship. Why do we worship him? Because he's the creator. He is the only one that deserves our worship. No one else. Oh, have mercy. Uh, we've got these various idols that are in our lives, and sometimes we forget that you become like what you behold. You wonder why we treat each other like animals? You wonder why there is little respect for human life? You wonder why we seem to forget that the same color blood that runs through my vein, even though my complexion may be different than someone else, is because we have forgotten God. We are all one human race. There's only one human race. The song says, you're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. Isn't that what the song says? We are together. We must work together until what? He comes. And you see, if we fear God now with godly fear, there's nothing to be afraid of when he comes. There are those who scripture says will be running to the rocks and to the mountains saying, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb, have mercy. Have you ever heard of a, of a Lamb that has wrath? You see, when he came first, he came 
docile. He came as a child, as a babe, but when he comes back, he's coming back as king of kings and lord of lords. He has his, old, his entire army with him. And when we have the freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our conscience, you have a better society. Look back at every regime that has tried to pigeonhole and force people to worship a particular way. Oh, have mercy, help me, Lord. If you want to have a good society, if you want to fix the ills of the world, tell them to fear God. Nothing man-made will ever do the trick. Stalin tried it and he failed. Hitler tried it and he failed. And if we try it in this country, we are going to fail. We've got to fear God and worship him. Remember that he's the creator, the one who made heaven and earth. And he has left us with a symbol that never fails. He says, I've given you a cycle. And every time it comes back to the seventh day, remember that was the day I finished my work and I rested. And it's a sign that I am the creator. So worship me. Notice this statement. It's taken from a, from a book called The Great Controversy, page 436. The duty to worship God is based upon the fact that he is the creator and that to him all other beings owe their existence. And wherever in the, Bi wherever in the Bible his claim to reverence and worship above the gods of the heathen is presented, there is cited the evidence of his greatest power. Notice this, Psalm 96, verse 5. All the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Isn't that beautiful? Look at this. We find it uh, in Isaiah 40, and verse 25, verse 26, and 45, verse 18 says, To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal? saith the Holy One, lift up your eyes on high and behold who hath created these things. Thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. I am the Lord and there is none else. Friends, when we tell our children that your great, 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 great grandfather was an ape, we shouldn't wonder why they begin to behave that way. But if you tell them that you came from God, you go looking for God and say, what is God like? And the Bible says that God is love. Yeah. You can't love in the highest sense of the word outside of God. He's our creator. So fear God. Knowing that the, Lord, that the Lord is God, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us do what? Kneel before the Lord, our maker. And the holy beings who worship God in heaven state as the reason why, they, why their homage is due to him. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? For thou hast created how many things? All things. You ever heard of this guy? This is Francis Collins. He's, he's actually an NIH. And he studied the genetic code. And one thing he noticed, and he write this, write this here in his book, The Language of God, a scientist presents evidence for belief. He speaks of how worship even affects our DNA. You think the Bible was joking? You ever know, heard of this guy, Dr. Newberg, University of Pennsylvania? One of the things he discovered that when people who are in an act of worship, he, he studied the, the, the effect on the frontal lobe. There's another word that starts with F. The frontal lobe. And he noticed that there was prefrontal cortex expansion during worship. And we don't have any time to worship God? Say, what? Listen, I got things to do when people to see. I don't have any time for that right now. God understands. I, I prayed to him this morning. Really? The Bible says, because I make your word my meditation, I have more wisdom than my teachers. Amen. Psalm 119. 99, 100. Go look it up. And so, this one is on your notes. It says, by the first angel, men are called upon to fear God and give glory to him and to worship him as the creator of the heavens and the earth. In order to do this, they must obey his law. You know what his law is, my friends? You didn't know this was coming up. Have mercy. 
but his law is his long-lasting almighty will. His long-lasting almighty will. I, I didn't do the last part because I said, you know, I, I'll cut that out for now. Uh, but this was also, it's also, this also in my book, Gems of Thought. Okay, some of you have it. It says that locates and makes us aware of our wrongs. That's what the law does. It has a job to do, right? And if we were law-abiding citizens, we wouldn't have to be calling 911 all the time giving our good friends over there on Research Boulevard a headache. The reason you are free to roam about the country is because you are a law-abiding citizen. Break the law, and we have to call Jeff. Break the law, and we have to give them a hard time. But if you keep God's law, you're automatically going to honor and take care of your society. Oh, have mercy, my friends. The answer is in the word of God. The importance of the Sabbath as the memorial of creation is that it keeps ever present the true reason why worship is due to God because he is the creator and we are his creatures. The Sabbath, therefore, lies at the very foundation of divine worship for it teaches the great truth in the most impressive manner and no other institution does this. The true ground of divine worship, not of that on the seventh day merely, but of all worship is found in the distinction between the creator and his creatures. The great fact can never become obsolete and must never be forgotten. We worship him because he's the creator. And so our final question, final question. How does this message help to, come on somebody, you heard it in the song. How does it help to fix our minds on God's promises? How? At the sounding of that first angel's message, uh, there was what is called the Great Advent Awakening. And all across this country, people were looking forward to the coming of Jesus. Yeah. All across this world. There was a Baptist preacher by the name of William Miller. And that song that you heard today was written from his experience. I have fixed my mind on another time. We don't know that time. But those who coalesce around the truth that one day he's coming, we don't know the day or the hour. We were gonna, we're going to do just like Abraham. Bible says that he looked for a city that has foundations. Hebrews 11 verse 10, whose builder and maker is God. Wouldn't it be nice to live in a place that you don't have to worry about the licensing permit for the architect who did this work? And you have to worry about trying to fix it up ever so often. It fixed our mind on another time. Fix our mind on another place. Fix our minds on the promises of God. And guess what? Revelation 21 says, And I, John, saw a what? A new heaven and a new earth. He spoke of the holy city that comes down. And then he says something very special. He says, And there shall be no more crying. No more sorrow, no more pain. You could add to the list, my friends. No more sin, no more dying. You won't have to worry about a toothache. You won't have to worry about sore knees. You won't have to worry if someone is coming in to steal that which you have so, you've worked so hard to, to, to put together. No, my friends, we've got this hope. And so by the grace of God, may the fear of God move you to faith in God as we await Christ's return. Is that your desire today? Amen. Is that your desire today? I pray that as we sing this song, as we close, we've lingered a little longer today. We've got to tell Brownlee that, you know, I still took my time back. But I pray it was a blessing to your heart. As we sing this song, it, it may be a new one for some of us, but I pray it will be a blessing for all of us. And when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, when the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Is that your desire today? And so let us stand together.
Let's sing this song. 216. The words will be on the screen. 216. trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the same earth shall gather over on the other shore and the waters of the thunder I'll be there when the road is called a to follow your word. We want to give you all the glory and the praise. We want to have your word in our hearts. Help us, Lord, to do that. Help us, Lord, to follow as we have read in your word. And Father, may your grace be upon us all, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we have the final scriptural benediction, and we have prayer for the meal. you, Pastor, for that uh, timely message. Our uh, scriptural benediction can be found in the book of Romans, Romans 15, verses 5 and 6. And it reads, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before we pray, I just want to remind you there will be tents. There will be tents on the outside if you prefer to dine outside today. If you're going to be staying here with us, there's seats inside here. Uh, but just have, if you're able to stay, just have an enjoyable time as we continue to now feast on the food after we've had the message. Amen. Amen. And don't forget the concert. That's Invite right. a friend to the concert this evening at 530. Yes. Right. So if you're by your heads, we'll pray for the food. Dear loving, gracious Heavenly Father. Thank you for your word, Lord, the food for our lives, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will bless this meal that's been prepared, Lord, for us, that it might be nutritious to us, Lord, and bless the hands that prepared this meal. This is my prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.